Hello everyone, my name is Jeff, and this is the Promised Neverland Episode 4 Review. With me, as always, are Kobe and Tori. Welcome to the show. Ooh, we got a combined introduction. Woot woot. Yeah, so professional. Do I usually not do that? I feel like you, you, there's a pause in between names. Now we're, now we're just grouped together. We're just Kotori. You look the same to me. We are. We do look very similar. Yeah, definitely. Um. So let's talk about traitors. Which one of you is a traitor? Tori. Tori, you're the traitor. Get out. <laughs> uh, speaking of traitors, perfect, this episode has one. segue. <laughs> <laughs> or does it? I don't know. We're going to talk about it. L- listen to find out. Uh, so would you guys like to begin the discussion? I would. Yeah, sure, I With guess. With all the silly antics out of the way. <laughs> <laughs> so the episode begins with Mama and Crone having a little discussion uh, in Crone's, or no, not Crone, Mom's office, essentially. And Mama's basically calling Crone out. She's basically saying, like, uh, you're you're my pawn. Keep behaving. Keep doing well. Don't worry about who the, the spy is when the kids... And if you behave, you'll become mom, I promise. So she and, and she knows that she played tag with them. And uh, I take this all to mean that she basically found her out. Like she knows that she's trying to stab her in the back. And mom is just like, no, don't, don't do this classic bad guy reveal. Just like, I know what you're doing, but I'm I'm, I'm going to tell about it in a very calm way. And and to be honest, Crone didn't really hide it very well because she likes to shout in the room bullets. in the like in the middle of the night about her yeah. dastardly plans. Yeah, I was gonna say that. Do you think that Mom knew about it or just knew that she like had the intentions to do about it? So I think she, but, I think she knew. I, I think everyone knew. I think the whole house heard. <laughs> well, I mean, I, I wonder what the world of the humans is like. I mean, I wonder if. Because the demons are running things now, if all the humans are just kind of backstabbing each other, trying to curry favor in the demon world so that they don't get eaten kind of thing. So I wonder if that kind of just comes with the territory. Like, you know, whenever you work with someone else out there, you just kind of have to watch your back and assume that they're going to try and stab yours, you know? Well, that's like the theme of this whole show itself. Is it, it seems like gearing up to is like, what would you, what are you willing to do to survive? Um, do you stay pure? Do you stay strong? Or do you have to compromise and make sacrifices? Or do you have to, you know, be a rat? Do you have to scratch your way to the top? I mean, it's, it's something that all these characters kind of deal with. And even the adults, even with mom and uh, sister crone. So it's, it, I'm glad to see it encompass like all aspects of these characters. Yeah. And, uh, it, it just, um, I just like kind of the world building, I guess, kind of it, it alludes to what it's like out there. Like what, what, what kind of world is this that it produces these types of people that are kind of, well, uh, they're, they're not good guys anymore. Yeah. Are there good people out there? Well, is it just the kids? Well, I mean, we're just looking at one vantage point, one scope of this weird world we don't understand. And if you look at like, I don't know, an office building in modern day America right now. It's there's probably some cutthroat people that you know you say you can't trust them. So you're saying this is a workplace drama? <laughs> no, I'm just, <laughs> I'm just saying that it's a showing these people who are backstabbing each other and who knows, maybe in another like if there are other farms, there's people actually working together and um, you know Revolution. Revolution. I like the the tier system so far of the show where it's not just like these kids against the all powerful mom. It's like we it shows that mom is has some enemies of herself is that she has to hold on to it and she's in danger if she loses uh you know these kids or if she fails in any way because she'll have a target on her back it makes her dangerous um because it's it's she just, has something to lose yeah she has something to lose which which I, I think is a great perspective to have they could have easily had mom as like this mysterious character with uh with like all seeing ability that they're trying to outwit but they're they're making mom you know have her own type of struggles and her own personal uh, spin on what's happening and, and struggling to survive. So I like I like this whole interaction and the whole scene. It was done so in a subtle way, which I like. It wasn't like done like I know what you're doing. You're 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 you're. Uh, this is I'm laying out your plan exactly. It's yeah. more like hey, stay in line. Read you between know? the lines. Yeah, read between the lines. Which is great. Uh, and so the scene immediately afterwards, like you said, Kobe Crone does what she likes to do and sings out her plan. Uh, although in this case, it's more of a. She rips the head off of the doll that she has, stomps it to bits, and then she says, and then I'll be mom. I guess it's it's a very physical enactment of what she's going to do. Uh, I guess she wants to kill mom as well? I, get, 
I guess I liked that. I know last week I commented like it just seems like over the top and crazy out there, but now I kind of like that she's like this wild card character, this 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 uh, sporadic type of chaos that's thrown into the mix, and I think she's like an interesting player going forward. So as much as I wasn't on board on her over the top shouting last episode, I'm more on board with it now. Yeah, she adds a, def- a different energy to the show, which I think is much needed to keep things fresh, mm-hmm. at the very least. Yeah, I think it's weird if you think of her as exactly like Mom, but if anything, she's supposed to be like the opposite of Mom in sort of a way, weird way. So I guess it's fine. <laughs> uh, so the scene afterwards, we see the trio, Emma, Ray, and Norman, discussing their next move. And the next move, according to Norman is to tell uh, Don and Gil... Is it Gilda? Gilda. Gilda, yeah. Is to tell Don and Gilda what's going down. And also, they're going to play tag in teams. So this will reflect how the actual escape is going to happen because most of the kids are weak and inept. <laughs> and so they're going to be... They're going to need some leadership. So instead of escaping individually, they're all going to group up and, and work as a team. It's and um a good montage a good scene like i, yeah. I loved uh how they how they worked as a team to get out of there yeah and then with um don and gilda uh i think norman said that he was going to try and make them lead the team as well lead some teams um but uh, anyways back to him telling them the secrets uh, ray is like well what if they're the spies and norman's like well it's okay because uh figuring out who the informant is and also getting them on our side, I can do those things. And how is he going to do that? Well, listen to find out. Uh, <laughs> and it's also so, the scene because this is when he is this when he says we're going to actually do it in ten days. Not yet. Okay. Um. But uh. Yeah. So, uh, Gilda and Don weren't they the okay? So Gilda was definitely suspect as being the one of the traitors in the last episode. But didn't one of you guys suspect Don as well? No, that was a. Uh, you thought that was a little kid. Yeah, there was that other little boy that like runs oh, around. Yeah. Philip, right? Is that the Philip? Is that a, I think maybe it could be. I'm sorry, Philip. I thought it was. I thought he was the spy. And at this stage, when they're like, it could be Don or it could be Gilda. I was like, then it's obviously not them. It's it's that little boy. <laughs> like, <the one laughs> I was like, yes, what I'm gonna rub it in their faces. <laughs> <laughs> it but, was him. But could it could it really be a small kid? You think? You're telling a kid to watch out and betray their friends. This is a like, world oh. of demons. It could be a demon in disguise. Who knows? Oh, true. A little imp. A low level demon. Demon demon in training. So I wonder why he chose Don and Gilda uh, as to like to tell them in the first place. Was it the, just because they were close to them? I guess it's because they're the oldest and the next oldest? Yeah, the next oldest and they're gonna be the ones that are gonna be leading other the small kids. Mm. I so guess they so. were we gonna really... have to bring him on eventually. <laughs> so mm-hmm. it's like yeah. you might as well do it now and try to get ahead of the spy by doing something unpredictable and leading him on instead of playing this cat and mouse game Norman wants to to draw it out in the open because that's the only way they can move forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and, and of course it uh for the viewers it kind of narrows the suspect list down to two people. Yeah. Um so yeah, the rest of the episode we're kind of wondering who's the spy. So uh yeah, as you said, there's a little montage of the uh, play, uh, kids playing tag in teams uh, and that goes pretty smooth and then afterwards we get the little conversation with Norman saying well Norman asks Ray how far do you think you are from figuring out a way to uh, destroy these tracking devices and Ray says 10 days and Norman's like okay we're gonna escape in 10 days and uh, unsurprisingly Ray and Emma are like what <laughs> we've got like a month and a half before the next shipment and uh, Norman's reasoning is well yeah mom expects that we're going to leave in about a month and a half so we got to outwit her by leaving way sooner than she expects mm-hmm. smart and characters getting I, ahead it makes of, sense yeah it's it's i love i love it it's i get the death note feel of uh one character anticipating the other what the other character thinks of said character um mm-hmm. so you have to do something to combat it yeah outwit your opponent and of course, with the ending in mind of this episode, it makes me think that conversation a little bit further. I don't, I don't know. We'll talk about it at the mm-hmm. end. Yeah. Uh, so if they do escape in 10 days, and that, I guess, makes the 13-episode season more reasonable, and we might actually see the conclusion. But I don't know. I don't really know how far the manga is along. Um, but uh, we'll, we'll see. Anyways, 10 days is when they're planning to escape. And uh, afterwards, we get a very long long one shot of a first person camera view of the three 
kids walking up the stairs and then approaching the door for some reason. Uh, and then they open the door and Gilda and Don are there. And essentially this is when they're going to tell Gilda and Don everything. And uh, Emma and Norman spill the beans. They tell them all about how, uh, you know, the kids were are, are being sold off as farm meat. Uh, and they tell them pretty much everything except for the fact that Connie actually died yeah. when they saw her. So they, they uh, exempt that detail from telling them. Wise choice or not? Um, it's gonna bite them in the ass. It totally is. <laughs> like it's it's gonna be. A, a it's, it, they're point. setting up. Yeah, yeah. It, it's it always it always it's set up this way, right? I guess so. But does it really add anything? They're never gonna see Connie again. You think it's just gonna like? Well, well, Kurt, I think Norman's thinking is, is this is gonna give them some hope. Yeah. You know, like Connie's out there. We gotta save Connie. But as soon as they escape, and if they and they find out that Connie's dead, like if they knew that Connie was dead now there would be no hope for them, right? Like, it'd be like, well, what's the point of escaping? Yeah. They're just going to kill us. And Norman's thing. thinking is probably, because cause Don and Connie were, uh, or, yeah, Don and, Don? That's his name, right? Yeah. Yeah, And Don. Connie were so close to each other, if he tells them that Connie's dead, then that's going to, I don't think, I don't think Donnie will be able to uh, maintain his cool. And so I think it's a, it's, a, it's a calculated risk. One that, you're right, it's going to bite them in the ass due to some conversation later, I think that uh, Crone says, but, you know, if they ever do anything, um, once they yeah, do they something wrong, come back to me. It's like, you mm-hmm. know, and that's, they're going to have their face shattered. Yeah. And, but totally in line with Norman's character to take this kind of risk. So, and I could see his thinking behind it as well. Um, anyways, Dawn's reaction is sort of like, hi, you guys are joking, right? Where's the punchline? Um, and then Gilda's more like, you know what? I suspected some shit was going down because ever since you guys came back from the gate, you guys were different and... You didn't apologize to mom. Yeah, usually, usually when you guys break the rules, you admit to it and take the punishment, and things are okay. So Gilda has sort of been suspecting something all along, whereas Dawn is sort of like, "Whoa, <laughs> like this is crazy." Understandably, yeah, a lot to take in as a kid. Um, and so yeah, they they uh, they request the assistance of Dawn and Gilda, and of course they accept. So now. Our trio has grown to a team of five. And as everyone is walking away, uh, Ray is all like, why didn't you tell them about Connie being dead? And, you know, Norman kind of explains to him why. And um, Norman's like, I've laid a trap uh, to find out who is going to, who perhaps is the spy. He says he tells Don the location. He says that he tells both of them different locations of where the rope is. He tells Don that the rope is underneath his bed and he tells Gilda that the rope is on, on like above a roof tile in the bathroom. Yeah, it's in the ceiling. Yeah. Yeah, in the ceiling. And so that's his plan is to uh flush is out the, to, the rat. Exactly, flush out the rat. And then the following scene, uh we see Gilda and Emma getting along so nicely <laughs> just before bed. And then when bedtime hits Gilda wakes up and has that stank look in her eyes, that sort of traitor look in her eyes. Yeah, she looks back at Emma like, like, hey, uh-huh. I am the traitor. And so she skulks around at nighttime. And um, and then we, so we see her kind of walking around the hallway. And then we cut to a note being slipped underneath the door of Mama. And the note says rope under, what is, does it say? It rope, says rope, rope under bed. N- yeah, rope under bed. Norman's bed. Under Norm- rope, Norman's bed, or something mm-hmm. like that. And so, um, yeah, we don't really see who puts the note in there. At this point where you got, because that's what I, I was thinking, because um, at, at this point I was thinking, because we didn't see who put the note. It's like, okay, it's, it's, it's kind of Dawn, but because we didn't see Dawn do it, I was like, maybe it's not Dawn. And... Um, and then again, I, 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 pro- I had the flash of, I think we could talk cause everyone listening to this is not a, a spoiler at the end of the episode, the reveal with Ray. It was like, I remember I thought like, I didn't think, Oh, it's you're def- jumping ahead. It's, it's, it's just because at this moment I was just like, maybe it wouldn't it be crazy if it was Ray. And then I was like, no, that's not it. I'm going to go back to that little kid theory. Right. <laughs> <laughs> so, so, so you never thought it was Gilda? Like they were setting it up. Yeah. The way that, they framed got- the hallway scene made it look like it was Gilda. But the fact that the note said it was under Norman's bed would completely debunk that. Up. Yeah, and then the way how it opens, because she she didn't actually go to rat on yeah. yeah. She went to Crone's room. It's like, oh, that was well done. We were supposed to think it's Don, but it's like, man, wouldn't it be crazy? Because we don't see Don. But like, nah, I think it's that little kid still. 
<laughs> um, Man, you just hate that kid for <laughs> some reason. Well, that kid might have something to do. Like, they did mention his IQ score and, like, how he was good at tag, but I think he's just going to die. Mm. Yeah, his fodder. That, yeah. I think they're setting that up. So either he's going to die or he's going to be, like, the bargaining chip because he's also going to be valuable in the future. Mm, that's a good, that's a good mm. theory. Okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, yeah, anyways, Gilda approaches Crone's room, and this whole time Emma's actually stalking Gilda and listening in on their little conversation. And Gilda looks like she's about to spout something like, I'm the traitor. But instead, she's all like, uh, thank you for looking after me, but everything is okay. And uh, apparently, this whole time, Crone has been looking after Gilda, checking in on her, making sure she's fine. But then she reveals her true intentions here and says something along the lines of, oh, so Emma told you everything. Hmm. You know, if you work with me, I'll make sure that I'll let you go. And then Gil is like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. Yeah, See you later, you're lady. Crazy, bye. I do. I I thought her neck was gonna get snapped. Like I really thought Gilda was a goner. <laughs> that that's how she dies. Yeah, Crone just snaps her. Crone's neck. like, just yeah. She's like, I'm not gonna betray my friends. Okay, snap neck. Yeah. Oh, I have to really admire the animation here. They made Gilda look super creepy. Like the really distorted, evil looking face she has when she's like right next to Gilda, trying to get her to join her side. I just love, I love super exaggerated, evil-looking faces. Yeah. And this is one of them. You said the, her face of Crone, right? Not Gilda. Yeah, Crone. Okay. She always has weird faces. Oh. Yeah, it's awesome. <laughs> um, and then uh, Emma's all relieved, like, ah, you're not the spy. And then um, they hug it out because uh, Emma is, sta- is awake and standing by the door when uh, Gilda comes back. And so Gilda, not the spy. Oh, at that part where she's crying and they're hugging... It's just so cheers bold. But at the time, I'm like, is she really the traitor? Is she, is she that good of an actor? But then I'm like, no, nah, it's just so sweet. This yeah. is genuine. Emma, but it's like, Emma, too trusting. <laughs> so the next scene, we see um, uh, a short scene with them outside with, uh, uh, let's see, Emma and Gilda are looking at Dawn, and Dawn is like like talking to Crone, I think. Mm-hmm. And they're kind of like, hmm, is it Dawn? Is Dawn the spy? And then we see... Uh, Norman and Ray washing clothes and Norman's like hey Ray why do you think uh, someone would betray other people and Ray's like maybe because they will be spared and live to grow an adult if they work with the demons Uh, basically that's what he says and Norman's like hmm and then we get a short scene with Norman and Emma and Norman's like hey Emma if there was a traitor what should we do with them do we leave them behind to die or bring them with us and Emma's like we should bring them with us because I believe in everyone. Everyone here is good. And, you know, if we leave them behind, they're going to die. So I, I wouldn't want that. And Norman's like, hmm. And then we come to the conclusion of the scene. Norman and Ray together are checking up on the two different locations of the rope. And the uh, they check in the ceiling of the bathroom, and the rope is still there. So that leaves Gilda in the clear. And then we see Norman checking underneath his bed. The rope is not there. And Ray is all like, oh, so it must be dawn then. And then the twist is revealed. Norman leans in to Ray and is like, aha, so you're the traitor. Dun, dun, dun. Dun, dun, dun. And the end of the episode. I was like, what? When did, it was did so you- awesome. I immediately went back and I watched like all the little moments that would have made sense to have Ray be the actual traitor. And, and there are three good pieces of evidence there. There's, I went back to the previous episode where they revealed that, uh, that there was a traitor amongst them. Because mm-hmm. it's done so well because Ray is actually the one who says the words, there's a traitor among us. But mm. it's done so in a way where Norman's like about to say it. So it's like when it's like Emma's like, if if uh, they know everything that we're doing and then Norman's like, if, if, if mama is truly watching us without truly watching us, that means. And then Ray finishes the sentence, there's a traitor among us. So it's it's like that it's it wasn't his idea, but he was smart enough to to, to go along with the fact and agree with the idea and sound like it was coming from him when really he was just stating what he knew that that norman and emma already knew just to kind of throw some uh smoke some, off his trail yeah so the three the three moments that i think definitely point out to ray being the traitor or how i guess norman came to suspect ray's a traitor is um one of them is he tells ray with locations of the rope but that doesn't necessarily mean he tells Gilda or Don. And that's probably the trap right there. Yeah. Uh, and then mm-hmm. the second one is, well, you know, Ray tells him a reason why a traitor would be a traitor. 
I mean, maybe that's not really good evidence, but it's kind of like, eh, you know. He's a smart kid. He could figure out. Yeah, why not see the good. But then the third one, I think, is um when he when uh what's his face uh, Norman says says oh the rope's not here and then Ray says uh, oh so it must be Dawn then and then um I think that one is a good one good piece of evidence because he Ray is too smart I think to jump to conclusions mm-hmm. you know what I'm saying like it's like he there there's still other possibilities that could happen but instead Ray was quick to just point out that Dawn was a traitor. I like kind of thing. Oh, this whole thing was because the plan itself. It's like tell both people different parts of the rope um, where they are, and then whoever rats it out is going to be the traitor or the spy. On the surface, I thought that was a little uh, elementary in terms of if you were the spy, then you would you would you probably be smart enough to not reveal your hand so quickly as to steal the rope where they know it is, because then you obviously given yourself away. Um, but the Norman played into that by, by, I mean, uh, Ray played into that by wanting to prove that there is a spy, that he had to t- steal the rope so he could pass the buck off to somebody else. Um, so it was a, it was a problem that I had that, th- that the show solved with its cleverness. So I applaud it for that. I just, I, I need to figure this out and maybe I have to go watch, rewatch every single episode, but because obviously Norman is suspecting Ray to be the traitor. That's why he set the trap only for him. But I'm trying to figure out from previous episodes how he would deduce that. Why he would suspect them in the first place? Yeah. Probably Ooh. because he knows Ray is, I would say, because he knows Ray is like one of the smartest people there and is the one most logically able to hide this from them. Um, and he knows the information. He knows that mom would want somebody close to them. Um in order to it and ray kind of fits the bill so maybe we'll find out yeah and ray, mean, is, ray is pessimistic because he asked him the rides because maybe they'll cut a deal and hopefully let them live norman is such a good insight of character that he knows that that's sort of that that whole idea is something that fits ray's character mm-hmm. uh, and the other thing i actually was thinking it might have been like ray in the first couple of episodes just because of a few um instances like there was that one part remember in the first episode where they were talking about what they would do if they escaped and everyone was like kind of talking about their dreams and what they would do ray is the only one who's like i have to figure out how to survive first so it's like what like why is his answer so fucking dark even even norman's like yeah i want to see new places and and was like i want to stay here and everyone's like i want to see a fucking train and then ray's answer is so dark and kind of it, it it like he is like it just seems unnatural that a kid who's lived a great life would assume that there's lots of danger out in the world. Well, he didn't. I don't think he knew at that stage. I think they you went. Think so? I no, I don't think. Yeah, so. I think he revealed. They, they revealed the plan, at, like he revealed the future out there. It reaffirmed that the outside is horrible, but Ray's a survivor, so he did his best option, which is after he was told the reality of the situation, that's when he went to mom and he cut a deal. I don't think he knew before. No. Oh, so you think? No, I think he knew. Um, I think he found out before uh, Norman and Emma told him. Because there's this scene, uh, and I, I suspected something was wrong with this scene when I first saw it. So um, there's a scene where Mama is hanging out with the kids, and she flashes to the tree that Ray is normally sitting at, and he wasn't there. And I was like, why wouldn't she just go out and follow them or try to find them or track them? Like That just seems so weird to me. And then that's when Ray snuck up on Emma and Norman. Well, I think he found where they were at because uh, Mama or Mama told them where he was, where they were, and he went out and you know confronted them, and that's when they looped him into the plan. So, hmm. so how so? Do, are you guys agreeing with how long Ray knew, or like? I think well, then, you, so you're saying that he he knew before he was even roped into the plan. And I'm also saying that. Oh, are you? Yeah, I said that like well, in the ha- first episode. But ha- are you saying that he knew, oh, in the first episode? Yeah, that's what I said. I'm saying he found out in between when Connie, you know, when Norman and Emma were taken or when they went to go visit the uh, the wall or whatever, when they come back between then and that time, he found mm. out. I don't think he's always known. So we all have mm. different, you, Jeff, you say always known. Uh, Tori, you're saying he found out after the first episode before they they told him, and I'm saying he became the spy after they told him, and then he went to mom. So we all have three different 
different time periods of when Ray's a spy. And that's what's yeah. great about the show that that we all have these the theories that we can discuss and, and we wait to find out the answer because this was the first cliffhanger uh, the other cliffhangers were good but this is the first one i was just like i really want to see the next episode yeah seriously I, I mean this show it's it's able to 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 what's the word I we already compl- i've already complained before about shows like this where there's like kind of a, a mystery in the background and you kind of want to know more about it but this show effectively drops golden nuggets at the end of each episode and they all lead up and string together in a beautiful way. And and yeah, I, I also want to see the next episode very eagerly. And I'm sure they're going to reveal, they're going to answer the questions we have. I think that's one of the great things about the show is they make you ask questions and then they answer them fairly quickly, but then they raise new questions. Yeah, so the, it's like this the, great balance the of information. The traitor isn't drawn out for like four episodes. It was, yeah. it was introduced last episode, there's a traitor. At the end of this episode, you find out who the traitor is. It's like, mm-hmm. great. Oh, so that raises my question from earlier. Um... With Norman suspecting Ray as a traitor, and he says they're going to leave in 10 days. They're obviously not going to leave in 10 days. I think right? that Norman is is betting on the fact that he can turn that he can turn Ray, get him on their side, and be a double agent against Mom, and still leave in 10 days. I think, I think he's going to follow through with the plan. Well, if he already told them about the, the rope, you don't think that he told Mom about the um, 10 days? Uh, yeah, because then that, that brings in the question to like, was Ray even working on the tracker like at all? Like, does, does I mean, he yeah, know that, that's a good question. I was wondering, like, what if the 10 days he's referring to is actually in 10 days, you guys are going to be shipped off early or some some weird twist like that? It was, it was just to suss out some kind of time period that really had nothing to do with the tracker. It really had more to do with what Ray's plans were with him, like, assuming he's the spy kind of thing. Mm. Okay. I guess we'll have to see. I guess we will. Yeah. Um, all right. Is there anything else you guys want to talk about? No. No. This was episode. this was a solid. This was a this was a really good episode. The show is building really nicely, and now I'm starting to look forward to it on a week to week basis. Mm-hmm. Same here. I like figuring out all the clues and trying to be as sleuthy as they are, but I'm pretty sucky. Yeah. <laughs> and actually, you know, being it good enough to go to go back, so as I did, I rewatch. Go back and watch that third episode scene where they reveal who the spy is. It's just done really well. Um, about just the whole setup of it. So it's like for a show to, to warrant you to go back and rewatch certain things to see the things you catch to see if there were clues. It's great. It's a good on you show. Yeah. All right, Kobe, would you like to sign us off? Sure. You've been listening to this on Nerd Blaze. Like, comment, subscribe for all that fun stuff. We do weekly reviews of Promise Neverland. We've done uh, like Mega Megal- uh, Megalobox, Zombieland Saga, Cells at Work, um, all those fun reviews as long as. Uh, as well as a uh, podcast we like to do called Anime Ricochet, where two dudes who know nothing about sports talk about sports anime. Uh, we just dropped an awesome new episode about Baki on Netflix. So, yeah, we have a lot of content. Um, thank you all very much for listening, and I'll leave the see you to Jeff. See ya. <laughs>